All right, but folks, I'm back again. I thought I'd just go ahead since I had everything out. Got my skillet washed. I've got another clean plate. And I've got my butter Crisco. And then I've got some plain Crisco out. So I'm just about out of my butter Crisco. I think I might have enough to make show you how to make this fried cornbread. I'm going to tag this in to my brother. Because he's the one who wants, he says he's tried and tried. And he cannot make it like Mama did. So I have my meal and my flour out. I do use a uh, white lily cornmeal also. So when you do fried cornbread, you do it just like you were going to put it in a skillet to bake it. So we're going to start it. And I'm not going to make a whole lot. So we're going to start out with, this is a cornmeal mix. That's about one half of a cup. And two half of a cups. I want to try to get enough in there to make, can't get a whole cup in there. All right, there's going to be close to two cups. If you, Now, the more you want to make, the more meal and flour. So if you measure your meal and flour, if you put two cups of meal, you put one cup of flour. Okay, if you put four cups of meal, you put two cups of flour. Okay, so here's my flour again, this white lily. I'm going to put one heaping teaspoon, so table, excuse me, one heaping half cup. That was three of the uh, white lily self rising cornmeal mix. So then I'm going to put another half of the flour, and that was white lily self rising flour. Okay, so I use a lot of that. So guess what we got here? JFG mayonnaise. You can also use Hellman's Light. I have tried it and it works just fine. I'm just out right now. So I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take, let me find a spoon. I thought I had one out here, but I'm not seeing where I put it. It's not in here. So let's see. Let me get me another one. This looks like a big old soup spoon. <laughs> it will be just fine, you all, because it's going to be delicious. Um, my mama loved fried cornbread. My brother, I, I think all of us like fried cornbread. When you go to Dollywood, you pay expensive price for fried cornbread. So there's uh, three cups of self rising, three half cups. So it's one half cups of uh, cornmeal mix, self rising cornmeal mix one and a half of the half cup so that's one cup to we're, well i'm getting all bum fuzzled so we're just going to say that that's two cups of cornmeal self-rising and one and a half cups of self-rising flour i'm going to put just a little bit more cornmeal because i think i just put one and a, a half so i'm going to put another half of cornmeal so that's going to make two cups of cornmeal self-rising cornmeal and one cup, good cup of self-rising flour. So here we go. I don't know what this measurement is. Just get you a soup spoon. There you go. There's one. I'm going to say a big old. I'm going to say that's probably two tablespoons in that. And two. So we're going to set that back. I'm going to use that spoon to stir it. And guess what, guys? Water. Not milk. Water. And also, I'm going to set this here where you can see me. I've got two cups of self-rising white lily cornmeal. One cup, uh, approximately, of white lily self-rising flour. I'm going to say three heaping tablespoons of JFG mayonnaise. We're going to stir it now. I'm going to put about half of that water in there. And then I'll show you the consistency that that's supposed to be. <clears throat> I hope my brother Stacy's watching. This looks like it's going to be more than what I want. I'm going to have to give this away, looks like. And my husband won't let me give away cornbread because he loves it. You can also, I mean, this is just good fried cornbread. I'm going to take some more water. And, and guys, the reason I just use mayonnaise, that's going to be about two cups of water in that amount is because mayonnaise is nothing but oil and eggs. 
So you just think about that oil and egg. You don't have to go through all that big drama of making cornbread. I mean, my goodness, how simple could it be? I mean, this is Sheila E. from Tennessee. How simple could it be? I want to try to get rid of these big old fat rolls. When I look in the thing, it just looks like I'm huge. <laughs> I guess I am. I just don't realize it. I told somebody the other day that just about looked like a walrus. I'm going to have to have a little more water, guys. And you want to use cold water. You don't want to use hot water because it'll cause it to start rising. I'm going to go ahead while that's sitting there, and I'm going to go ahead and try to get some of my... And this is something that you'll continue to put shortening in or oil, whichever one you want. Turn that up on high to get that started while I'm stirring. My brother Stacy, I'm going to tag you into this. I want you to watch. Now this has to be a little bit thicker than that flitter bread consistency. This is going to be like the cornbread uh, mix that you put into a, a skillet, a cast iron grease skillet. And if you're using a cast iron skillet, and you want to make cornbread, you use this same recipe, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You grease that cast iron skillet heavy inside with Crisco, whether it be butter Crisco or whether it be regular Crisco. Just take your hand and get in there and just grease all the way around the sides, guys. That's all you got to do is make sure it's greased good. Put that in the oven on about 400, 450, depending on how your oven bakes. And just sort of watch it. I want to say it probably takes... I want to say anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes, depending on how your oven bakes. I just sort of wash mine. I don't can't time it. I'll have to time it for you one year, one time. So now look here, guys. See, that's a little bit thicker consistency. That's probably approximately two whole cups of cornmeal and one cup of corn of uh, self-rising flour and two cups of self-rising milk. So now I want you to watch. I got that ready to go. That's a good consistency there. See there? It's real thick. Not so thick that it won't fall out of the spoon. So that was probably a cup and a half of water in that. I'm going to say three heaping tablespoons of, of mayonnaise. So now this oil is hot. I'm going to cut it down. What we're going to do is I'm going to take, there's one. I don't want to get them too big because I can't turn them. There's two. Now this is what they call whole cakes. I'll put a little more in there, probably another teaspoon. I'm going to let that sit there and bubble. I'm going to use my spatula. The one that I ain't supposed to use, you're supposed to use plastic. Plastic just don't do it for this. I can't pick it up. Now, you can see that bubbling. I'm, I've not yet got me a tripod, folks. I want to try to get me a tripod so you can see what I'm doing. But anyway, that's my, still my flitter bread over here. My husband ain't been in here. That's still good and warm and soft. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're not going to bother that. We're just going to let that sit there and sizzle. And you're going to have some little pieces that comes off the side. Don't worry about that. Just let that go. That'll be something you throw away. All right, it's a sizzling. And if you find you a good non-stick skillet, this is one that I've got. It, well, I have to, I have to throw them away every year. And I have to buy new ones or ask for them for Christmas presents because I go through I go through these Teflon or non-stick skillets like melted butter. I mean, I, I cook, folks, you know, and it looks like a way, of course, way prices are getting on food. People are going to have to go back to preserving and cooking for their families or, you know, it's just getting, it's getting unreal. So this summer, if God lets me live, I plan on canning some green beans and some cold packed tomatoes and you know you can can potatoes too you can uh, get the uh, yellow gold yukon that's the only ones i've ever tried to can pressure can pressure cook they're absolutely delicious you take them when you pressure cook them so long and in your uh, pressure cooking can, uh, pressure cooker there should be a book in there it tells you how long or you can google how long to pressure cook and at what uh, gauge and at what pressure you would cook potatoes on when you get them out, uh, they're good for a year or so. You just drain the water off of them, put it in a skillet with uh, some shortening, and you got it. So this is, this. I'm just letting this sit here. See there? And it's, it's just sitting there sizzling. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. I'm going to shout out to Hannah Conley. She loves fried cornbread. Maybe I can get her Uncle Bob to bring her or send her a piece of fried cornbread. 
because she loves fried cornbread. I still owe her a cherry cheesecake. She loves cherry cheesecake. I've just been working and busy and, and baking and making videos, and I've just not got around to it, but I know that she'll enjoy it when I do get around to it. All right, so well, I got, that looks just like that flitter bread, don't it? But it's not. It's, it's what they call a whole cake or fried cornbread. So you, this, I've got, I had that down on medium. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. I'm also gonna put some uh, napkins in this plate to absorb the oil or the shortening. You don't need all that. We don't need all that. All we want is that bread. And I've got that turned back up just a little bit more. Let me see what this side looks like. Now you just watch me. And you see there, now that looks totally different. From that flitter bread, That's this is a whole cake, this is a fried cornbread, and I'm going to trim this little edge off of it, because, like I said, you want, want it to be pretty, you want to have a good presentation when you serve this to your family, or or your company, or whoever. So this is done. I can tell by the feel of it. Don't take long for them to get done. Can you see that? So that one's done. We're going to set that right there. I hope my brother sees it. Now, you see these little crumbs? See them crumbs in there? I always throw those away. See that? I always throw those away. And then I start with a clean pan. So I'm gonna put some more Crisco in here, cut my heat down. And I'm gonna start with probably another tablespoon. And I'm gonna start that around in there and I've got my heat on medium high. You want that to be, uh, I'm gonna put part of that back. We don't need all that. I'm gonna you want that to be good and hot, folks, when you start frying this cornbread. All right, I'm going to put one. You see that, my brother Stacy? Two. I'll put a little more just so you'll be happy because I can't make them as big as our mama did. But, but uh, And I don't try because ain't nobody made beat you mama. That's just all there are to it. Ain't nobody like you mama or your grandmother. And I know a lot of my family and friends have made fried cornbread. I know both of my aunts, my Aunt Jean and my Aunt Stella that are still with me and I thank God for them every day. Uh, I'm sure they make fried cornbread a lot cause that's, that's what they like and that's what they're used to. So anyway, uh, I, know, I know those two aunts do and I would, I would dare to say that uh, uh, some other family members, I'm not sure if my sister does, but Anyway, when my brother sees this, I hope he will try this, and I believe he will. He wanted me to put this on there. He uh, remembers Mama making it, and it, it will be a good memory for him. And also, it, it's just a comfort food. This is not a diet food, folks. This is a comfort food. So, uh, also a shout out to my cousin. I believe he lives in South Carolina, Bobby Madron. There's some fried cornbread for you. You may have to come down and visit me one day for, and I'm sure your wife can cook all this, and, and uh, but it's just memories. Your mama could cook this and fry this, and she was a very good cook, and uh, and I miss her too, and loved her too. She's a beautiful woman, and your and your children, your daughter, and your uh, granddaughters all favor her. I remember her very well. She was a very loving, elegant, very elegant uh, lady. Now, uh, she uh, was very elegant, where I'm just just old country girl, but she was a very elegant lady. Now, all right, folks, I'm going to get ready. I've still got that on medium. I'm going to cut it up just a little. It's not bubbling yet, but I'm going to go ahead and, and my brother Stacy, watch that. Look at that, guys. Look at that. And I mash this down. You mash it down so you're, not, you're getting the air bubbles out. And you mash it down, guys. See there? See that? Now that's a good size one, but that still ain't <clears throat> the size my mama made. My mama would have that whole bottom uh, covered with cornmeal mix or flitter bread mix. And she could flip them and it'd never break. You know, that's that's just the way she was brought up and that's the way her mama showed her. And that's the way she showed me. And so I'm gonna make sure that that is not stuck and it's doing really good. And I'm going to let that sit there and fry a little bit more. And I'm going to take that little dab of shortening that I took out. And because you don't want your skillet to get dry. And like I said, you can use olive oil with this. I've done these with olive oil. You just can't use butter. 
and you cannot use, uh, if you're going to eat cornbread, you, you're going to have calories, you know that, and carbs. So, you know, this is just like I said, a comfort food, and this is something you would eat occasionally. This is not something, back when I was growing up, we eat it every day. See that? That's the back side. We eat it every day. I mean, when we went in, we had a pot of soup, beans, and cornbread, fried taters, glitter bread, or a cake of cornbread. My mom made a cake of cornbread. And uh, maybe a big old onion and some cucumbers and sliced tomatoes out of the garden. And I mean, that, that we was just, and then every morning we had biscuits and gravy. But we stayed busy. So, guys, I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to put it over here with it. The other one, and I'm going to clean my skillet up, folks, because I said each time you start, start to see all them crumbs, you start with a clean skillet. So all you got to do on these non-stick skillets is just take a napkin, wipe them out, start with a little bit more shortening. I don't want to waste it. You can put these in a, uh, once they're cool and set, you can put these in a, in a Ziploc bag and put them, just set them on the back of your cabinet somewhere. I wouldn't put them in the fridge. Uh, just, I put them, I take them in a Ziploc bag and put them in, in my microwave. And of course, if somebody has to use the microwave, they can move them. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try three. I'm getting brave now. <laughs> I hate to make a mess on video. As Sheila A. from Tennessee. So this is gonna be another good size. My brother wanted me to see if I could do it, and hey, I'm going to give it my best. So, as you can see, that's a good size one, and it's sizzling. We got that heat on medium heat. Got these over here resting, and they look delicious. Mm-mm-mm. And that was uh, approximately, uh, I want to say it was approximately uh, two cups of meal, or maybe two and a half cups of meal. One, a self-rising meal self, and a white lily, and white lily self-rising flour, one, one cup. And then it took about a cup and a half of water, and it took about three heaping tablespoons of mayonnaise. You use mayonnaise of your choice. You can use light mayonnaise. You can use Hellman's JFG or whatever. So I'm turning this up just a little bit, folks. I'm going to taste of this little crumb right here and see how many memories that brings back. And I always say, thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. You hear that crunch? Oh my goodness. No, I'm not saying that, folks. That's good. That's brought back a whole lot of memories for me. Where my mama used to make fried cornbread. I don't think I've made any in years. So, yeah, so it's. I'm going to let this one fry a little bit more. It's still tender. But that is so good. I want to try to compare it to something. Almost, it tastes almost like uh, original Fritos, and it, and that's what it tastes like. That crunch on it tastes like Frito chips, and that's amazing. But anyway, we've got this frying, and uh, I'm gonna get bread, guys. There we go. What do you know? God blessed us. He blessed that, and may He bless you. And I've probably got enough uh, mix. Probably made way too much mix. My daughter loves fried cornbread too. I'm gonna send one of these to Hannah, my sweet grandbaby, my granddaughter that sort of like adopted granddaughter. She's not blood, but she feels like my granddaughter who has um, a newborn baby and his name is Bryson Isaiah Abraham. And that's where my Abraham comes in at. I have Isaac and Jacob as my grandsons and then I was blessed that she named her uh, little boy his middle name Abraham and that just blessed my blessed my soul and blessed my heart and uh, he's such a precious baby but anyway and I believe he has a true gift from God you know he was born premature and just weighed a little over two pounds but he is strong and striving and getting getting healthier and he is gorgeous has the most beautiful blue eyes I believe I've ever seen they just sparkle like blue stars so guys this is you can see this is getting ready it's got a little bit of white tip there on the end so i'm going to turn that over and get that done i want you to look here mm -mm -mm. you see how long it don't take long at all 
And that's that's gonna make a enough for you know a whole family. That is so good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. I broke a little piece of that knife, but it won't hurt. It won't hurt, and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this out again. I'd just like to go ahead and get the rest of these fried. Because uh, like I said, I don't try to waste nothing. Let's try some olive oil this time. I might have enough so I can show you that it works with olive oil too. Um, I try not to waste nothing. My mama always told me, I better cut that down, hadn't I? She said, don't waste nothing that God says waste not, won't not. So we're going to put that in there. And that was, we're going to see how, I'm getting brave, aren't I, people? You know what? I might as well just put the rest of that in there. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a huge one, but that would have probably made three or four. That would have probably made two good ones. We're we'll gonna let that sit there and sizzle. Try to get this little mess up right here. I dropped some cornmeal mix. I tried it like I said. I try to clean as it go, or it won't be such a mess. I guess you learn that as you as you get older and then you uh, start raising your family and you're the only one when your children are little uh, to clean up the mess. They didn't have dishwashers. If they did, I didn't have one. You know, I might have to use the rest of that olive oil. So that's setting our sizzling. I'm going to put this Crisco back in. This one's a huge one. I don't know if I can get this and quit, but folks, I'll just tell you. Put the rest of my olive oil in there. Mm -mm -mm. Can you imagine with this glitter bread? And you, there are some oils that you can take olive oil and um, red pepper flakes and different seasonings, like Italian seasonings or herbs, and crush up in that olive oil and make an old dip like they sort of do it. Uh, I'm not sure which restaurant it is. I'm not sure if it's uh, Olive Garden or if it's uh, Longhorns or if it's Outback Steakhouse, but they have a dip that you can dip your bread in and it's just an old olive oil dip. And I made some for my grandson. I tried to Google a recipe and make some for my grandson. And you know, it was really good. And I've heard olive oil, if you eat with olive oil, that it, that it helps take care of your uh, stomach, your esophagus, and your colon. So we'll just ask the Lord to bless this. This is a big one. I don't know if I can get this in turn or not. If I make a mess, and then you're going to see it, aren't you? It's not. I'm only human. I make mistakes. We all do. But we, by practicing, just like we're living a Christian life of the Lord, we all make mistakes. We're not perfect. But when we practice more and more, that one day when we're with the Lord, we'll be perfect. But he tells us to strive to be. So if you make mistakes with your cooking or uh, whatever you're doing, just get up and clean the mess up and try again. Don't never give up. Don't never give up. So this is getting pretty, pretty big. You see there? So we're going to try to turn it. All right. You know, I, I couldn't believe I done it. It's a little brown. I did let it sit there, and that was with olive oil, so that may have been where the olive oil, you know, it gets hot quicker. It's not as uh, heat resistant as the Crisco, so that might have been with that, but it's still not, it's not too dark. Folks, this is still good. A lot of people like that crunchy. Like I said, it sort of tastes like uh, Frito corn chips, and uh, yeah, I love Fritos, you know, I can't help it. And I've not had none, so that was, that tasted pretty doggone good. So, you know, this is a huge one, and uh, it didn't take but a dab of stuff to make it. So, like I said, this is for my brother. He wanted me to put this on here. I'm going to turn this over again. Whoop, it got broken half right there, folks. You see, it did break in half right there on video. I cannot believe I've done that. But I guess, just like I just got through saying, Lord, just let me know I'm not... I'm not perfect, even with my cooking. We make mistakes. So what we're going to do is let that fry a little bit more. We don't want it to be raw. I don't want no raw cornbread. 
So we're going to let that, and I made that in a little bit bigger. That's why I said I can't flip them like my mama, but my mama sure could. Now, if she broke one, she didn't care. She just fried. She just kept right on frying, just like that right there. Because she said it's still eatable. You can still eat it. So let's see what this one looks like. I'm going to move this. See what we can do right here. I'll see if I can get that out without it breaking. Oh, yeah. Look at there. And here's another piece. Because that's really too much for one person to eat anyway. My husband, will, he will love this. So we're going to put that right there under it. And that's what we call fried cornbread, folks. Or fried hoe cakes. So, may God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching my videos. I'm going to uh, put this on Facebook. And then I also put it on YouTube. Uh, share with your friends. If you have something you'd like for me to try, be sure to um, text me or put it in the comments. And I'll be glad to try it. Uh, there are there's just many many recipes from our older days of growing up that you know that I still remember that I want to try and uh, and everybody's is a little different but go ahead and try to do that and uh, I'll show you these again there's your fried cornbread or what some people call hoe cakes and there's what I call let me turn this around here where you can see it hopefully I don't cut you out there's Flitter bread, and I don't know nobody else that makes what we call flitter bread, flour and water, and this is just cornmeal, just like you would make fry it, like you're going to make a pan of cornbread. This is the same recipe, and you fry it in a skillet with olive oil or Crisco. You can't use butter, uh, but anyway, there that is, and uh, again, I'll say this is Sheila E. from Tennessee. Down home southern cooking. Uh, Hopefully, these are not diet foods, but hopefully you can have a little bit of them in moderation. Everything's okay in moderation. Like I said, continue to watch. We'll try to keep putting more things on. I have many, many ideas and many recipes. So, uh, thank you. May God bless you. Keep you safe. May you always smile because smiles are contagious. This is Sheila E. from Tennessee. Thank you, folks.